With the release of Valorant in 2020, it made many think that Counter-Strike would be coming to an end. With new guns, new maps and an introduction of champions that would seem to bring a mix of Overwatch and Counter-Strike into one, how was Counter-Strike going to survive? Counter-Strike had been out for 8 years by the time Valorant had released, and to many it had just grew stagnant and for no fault of its own other than time. A game like Counter-Strike couldn't offer much more than what it had already offered. So why didn't Valorant take over? Remember the release of Overwatch? It wasn't exactly branded the killer of Counter-Strike, but it certainly was CSGO's biggest competition since its release. With questions like this that were circulating the internet, Overwatch was a new exciting game, with a roster of champions and new abilities. It was like League of Legends and Call of Duty mixed into one. They had an esports scene on the rise. Still, Counter-Strike stood tall. Counter-Strike's loyalists were not going anywhere. They enjoyed the game, they knew how it worked, they knew how smokes works, how to hold sides, all of this learning just to leave it and start again? No way! And even if you didn't like Counter-Strike's base game, you could look into the community workshop where a whole new avenue of Counter-Strike could be played. The whole base of why Valorant is different to Counter-Strike is simply the agents. All the agents have their own unique abilities, but they also share quite similar abilities and having a brimstone smoke followed by an omen fear and then a viper ult with a sober dart by a phoenix flash and now you don't even know what planet you're on. Whereas to Counter-Strike, there's only one flash vein, only one smoke, only one grenade, only one molotov. Easy to remember what they are and what they do. Now of course you didn't think you would sit through a video made about Counter-Strike and not hear about skins, right? A big part of the game. Sure, they don't offer anything but aesthetics, but it brings us back to more ways to play the game. To many, gambling started them on Counter-Strike, buying and trading skins, gambling on CSGO major events. Valorant's skin system is fine, and while it makes it safer not to spend a week's wage on cases, <coughs> it's boring. You can't sell them, you can't trade them, you can't case them, you can't do anything but spend $30 for a new Vandal skin, which is fine, but it's boring. While Valorant and Counter-Strike share the same purpose to their games, they're still two different games. Many of Valorant's players would have been players who loved Overwatch in the early years, but they can't justify playing whatever Overwatch is now. Players who wanted to be able to learn abilities and different ways to play the game, where you could play as a duelist like Jet to dash around the map, get the higher ground, or play a champ like Killjoy where you can lock down a bomb site with your utility. Whereas Counter-Strike players want a more slower paced game, where everything is based on strategy, such as an equal gun skill, playing for crucial information on a more realistic feeling game. 